All right, ladies and gentlemen, today's lesson is Shapes and Designs 2.3. Um, this is a lesson on how to use protractors, and it is on um, page 34 through 35. Uh, you will first need to do questions A through D, and then you'll need to do the ACE problems, which start on page 40. And they are problems 10 through 17, and then skip ahead and do problem 42. Our learning target today is that I can use a protractor to accurately measure angles. All right, for our notes today, our notes are pretty simple. Once again, we're going to want our notes to be in regulation. This means that we're going to want the Lesson 2.3 notes written at the very top of a clean sheet of notebook paper. We're going to want to put page 34 through 35 in the upper left-hand corner to show what page we are on and where we can go back to our textbook to find some information. We're going to want to make sure we've got our name, we have the date, and we have the crew. Those are all important facts to have. All right, let's start it on the notes. Today, we have very, very simple notes. Our notes are about protractors. Now, a protractor is a tool used to measure angles. They... Oh, spelling mistake. They have three common types. And notice my heading is protractors, and my subheadings are the three different types. The first type is a 180 degree protractor. And that can be used to measure angles from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. And they are the most common type, and you're probably most familiar with them. They are shaped like little half circles with the degree symbols all along the side. And they are the most common type used. They make fantastic ninja weapons. Then we have a 360 degree or circle protractor. And that can be used to measure angles from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Now, they are very, very useful when we're measuring turns that go an entire 360 degrees or if we're using cartography. If you've ever looked at a compass um, really closely, a compass has the directions listed in degrees from 0 to 360, with 0 being north and 90 degrees being east and 180 degrees being south and so on. And you find directions by using the degrees on your compass rows. Well, they're very tricky to use and they are shaped like a circle, and they usually have a line down the middle with one protractor above and a smaller protractor below. And they can be very, very tricky. They also make even better ninja weapons than the 360 degree protractor. And then we have an angle ruler. An angle ruler is a device with two arms that when bent to an angle shows the angle. And they usually look kind of like a ruler with a rounded edge here, and there's a little hinge there. And you slide them this way or that way, and you read them down here. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of angle rulers for two reasons. One, I feel they're a little easy to use. You don't have to have a full understanding of acute angles or obtuse angles to really understand them. Second, you don't really see them outside of school. You see a lot of protractors being used, not so many angle rulers. And plus, they're really easy. They're sort of like taking the easy way out. And we always want to keep you thinking. So let's learn how to use a protractor a little bit better. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you the really, really basics of how to use a protractor. There is nothing better than first-hand experience, actually using one to measure angles. However, I'm going to give you a really brief just how-to, and hopefully during class you will have loads of time to get your hands dirty, play with some protractors, um, not chuck them all across my room, and um, have some fun. But here is the first step, and this is the step most people skip. Step one, okay, and we might want to write down using a protractor step one and step two, okay? Okay. And step one is to benchmark the angle. Now, you don't have to draw the pictures, but it helps. 
Now, I've got this angle right here. Now, I want to measure it. Well, the first thing we're going to do is sort of benchmark it. What, what would be a good benchmark for this angle? Well, I know a 90 degree angle is a right angle, right? I know that's 90 degrees. And this is less than 90 degrees. Now, if it is less than 90 degrees, it is what we call an acute angle. Now, this is going to be very, very important in a second. I want to know that this is an acute angle, and my answer is going to be less than 90 degrees. Okay? And that comes in handy with step two. And step two is to line your protractor up to one of the rays on the zero degree mark. Now, there are two zero degree marks. There's a zero degree mark located here, and a zero degree mark located here. And we have 90 degrees dead center, of course. Now, there's two lines located on your protractor. There's one up here and one here. You want to avoid both of them. Because if you notice, where is your little invisible line passing through with your protractor? Your little invisible line passing through your protractor is located right here along that zero mark. Not, not, I repeat, not along this bottom line and not along that top line. That is the biggest mistake I see from people first using a protractor. If they line up those wrong, you're going to get wrong results and you're not going to have a good time. So always make sure you're lined up to the zero mark of your protractor and then read the results. But oh wait a minute, I've got two results. And this reads just like a thermometer. I have a number located here between 130 and 140. So it could be 135 degrees. Or it could be between 40 and 50. Hmm, 45 degrees. Well, which one is more likely? Those of you familiar with protractors probably already know. But it is we know from our step one here, that this is an acute angle. It's going to be less than 90 degrees. And only one of these numbers is less than 90 degrees. That's right. It is going to be 45 degrees. That is our correct answer. Now, why does it give both? Well, this is a three... Is, remember, this protractor is measuring two angles. It is measuring this angle right here, the one we have lined up to this zero mark, it is also measuring, at the same time, this angle here is lined up to the second zero mark. Okay, the other 180 degrees. And if we add up 135 plus 145, we get 180, right? But we always want to make sure we benchmark first. Okay? Otherwise, we could get confused very easily. And that will lead to the most confusing of all the protractors, which I will now show you how to use. A circle protractor. Now, a circle protractor is very tricky. It's very tricky because it has 360 degrees on its face. They start all the way over... They start all the way on the zero mark located right here, okay, and they go completely around for 360 degrees. This is very, very tricky to use. Say, for instance, I have an angle located here. Well, what's the angle? I have it located right here, it's telling me it's 45 degrees. It probably is. I know it's an acute angle. Or, if I read the other half, it could be 315 degrees. Okay? A very, very different angle, which would be this angle going completely around the other way. Okay? Similar to the 180, but way more confusing. For instance, Okay, 
In this problem we have an angle. It is an obtuse angle located right here. Okay, It's obtuse, meaning it is going to be greater than 90 degrees. The question is which one is correct? Which one has the right answer? Well, I've got one go facing right side up and I've got one upside down. You'd think the upside down one would be incorrect. Well, let's look at it. This one reads 0 right here and over here it reads 30 degrees and it reads 330 degrees. Huh. Do either of those seem like a correct answer? Remember, go back to your benchmark. Don't trust the number necessarily. Okay? Well, 30 can't possibly be right, because I know that 30 is way less than 90, and I know that 330 is way bigger than even 180. That's a gigantic angle. So this one is completely being read wrong. This one, however, if I line it up to the zero and go all the way around, I have two numbers. I either have 30, well I know 30 isn't right, again, because it's not my benchmark, or I have 150. And 150 seems pretty darn close to what that angle would be if I was benchmarking it. And 150 is the correct answer. Okay? Be especially careful with circle protractors from now on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your coursework for today, okay, or for class, is going to be Lesson 2.3, page 34 through 35, A through D. You will need a protractor to solve these problems. You will then need to do problems, the ACE problems, starting on page 40, from 10 to 17, and then skip ahead and do problem 42. Remember to keep your answers in the outline format. Okay, see you in class tomorrow.